The author Elmore Leonard, when giving advice to writers, famously said, leave out the parts that readers tend to skip. Another way to say this is cut out the boring parts. Now, this is the kind of vague, unhelpful writing advice that I rail against constantly on this channel, like the road to hell is paved with adverbs or read a lot, write a lot. But it's true. We have to cut out the boring parts of our writing. The reason it's unhelpful is because it doesn't actually give any way to actually know what the boring parts are and what they're not. So after reviewing hundreds and hundreds of scenes from our workshops, I've found the one thing that when you fix it, it automatically makes your scenes more readable and exciting. This is something that once you see it, you're not gonna be able to unsee it and it's automatically gonna make you a better writer. I'm telling you, the next thing you write will be better because you watch this video. So instead of me just trying to tell you what it is, let me show you inside a scene from Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone. This is from the chapter, The Letters from No One. The inciting incident of this scene is when Harry gets a letter addressed to him for the very first time. And out of this inciting incident of the scene comes the object of desire, which is Harry wants to open the letter. Now, as we read through this, we see for the rest of this scene, Harry is trying to get his hand on the letters that are addressed to him. He knows they belong to him. So this is what I want you to see. If I hop over to this other version of this scene, after the inciting incident, these are all the times where Harry took action. Now, if you want to reference these, they're down in the description of this video. But I highlighted every time Harry did anything or said anything. So I'm just going to review a few of these. Harry went back to the kitchen, still staring at his letter. He handed Uncle Vernon the bill and the postcard, sat down, and slowly began to open the yellow envelope. This was the first action he took after he first got his hands on the letter. Then he tries to get it back. He tries to get it back again. He tries to get it back again. And look, every time Harry takes action, he is trying to get his letter back. All through the scene, every single time Harry takes action or says anything, it's in trying to get his hands on his letters. So let's take a look at another scene. In this one, this is The Shining by Stephen King. This is the very first scene. And in this scene, Jack Torrance, the protagonist, is trying to get a job. In fact, he's not just trying to get the job, he's trying to get the job while also not letting Ullman, his antagonist, put him down and make him feel like a loser. So the inciting incident of this scene is him showing up at this office to get a job. It actually happens off the page. But his object of desire is to get the job without being talked down to by Ullman. So let's jump over. And again, I highlighted everywhere that our protagonist took an action or spoke dialogue. So I'm gonna let you review it. Again, I recommend you go down the description and check me out, click on the link and you can review this yourself. But every single time Jack does anything or says anything, he's pursuing that object of desire, which is to get the job without having Ullman talk down to him and make him feel like a loser. And so every single time he speaks or does anything, it's all coming from that object of desire. I'm going to look at one more. This is scene one in The Accidental Tourist by Ann Tyler. The inciting incident of this scene is when they decide to pack up and go home early from the beach. They were supposed to stay at the beach a week, but neither of them had the heart for it and they decided to come back early. Macon drove. Macon's object of desire is to get home as quick as possible. He has a system and he wants to drive home without any interruptions. We're going to pop over and again I've highlighted every single place where Macon took action or spoke dialogue of any kind. And again as you read through this you see over and over and over that Macon is acting and speaking to get his object of desire to stay on the road going home while his wife wants him to pull over because of the storm. So what does this mean? Why am I pointing out all of this action and dialogue in these scenes? What am I trying to point out? Well, of course, it's the one thing that's going to make you a better writer. And I'm going to get to that, but I need to point out a couple things first. The main thing about story is that story is about change. If change doesn't happen, then there is nothing happening in your story. You don't actually have a story. And the thing that kicks off that change is the inciting incident. The inciting incident is the thing that knocks your protagonist's life off balance. Something comes into their life and knocks their life out of whack. They had one plan of how their life was going to go, and now it's going to go in a different direction. Now, this doesn't mean everything was going good for the protagonist at the beginning of the scene. It could be going bad, 
The whole point is your protagonist has a plan and they're pursuing that plan and an inciting incident comes in and knocks that plan out of whack. Now, this can be a good thing coming into somebody's life. Like in Jack Torrance from The Shining, he got this job opportunity. And for Harry Potter, he got this letter addressed to him. It could also be a bad thing like in The Accidental Tourist where a vacation gets cut short. Okay, so now I can talk about the one change you need to make to your writing. This will make all of the difference. Every action and every piece of spoken dialogue by your protagonist has to be them pursuing their object of desire. Whatever it is that they want, they have to be pursuing it every time they take action and every time they speak in your scenes. You have scenes that ramble and become boring and hard to follow when your protagonist is doing a bunch of things that have nothing to do with their object of desire. So let's go back to that Elmore Leonard quote where he says, leave out the parts that readers tend to skip. Your readers care about what happens next, and the thing to keep them interested in what happens next is to make sure that your protagonist is pursuing their object of desire every time they take action. If they're not, there's a problem with the story and you need to cut it or change it so that every action and every piece of dialogue is them pursuing it. So here's your homework. In the next scene that you write, make sure that every time your protagonist takes action or speaks dialogue, they are pursuing their object of desire. And I've got a bonus thing for you here too. It's not just the protagonist. It's every active character in your scene needs to have an object of desire and they need to have competing objects of desire. And this is what creates great conflict and tension in your stories. And I have a whole video on how you can do that. You can click it right now on the screen or it's down in the description. That's the next video you should watch to keep learning about objects of desire and how to write great scenes. If you're wondering who I am, I am Tim Grawl. I'm the CEO of StoryGrid. I'm the author of The Threshing, Running Down a Dream, and your first 1,000 copies. My partner, Sean Coyne, is the creator and founder of StoryGrid, and everything we teach on this channel is from his research and writing over 30 years. But make sure you watch that next video, and thanks so much for being a writer, and I'll see you next time.